Okay. Shortly, you'll be hearing the voice of Duria Oladipo. She's executive director at Tech for Dev, and she'll be giving her welcome address. Hello, Duria. Hi, Joy. Good evening, Duria. Good evening. I want you to give your welcome address, and um, we'll continue from there. All right, wonderful. Uh, Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining the third edition of our virtual Women Texas Open Day program. We're super excited and elated to have women across Africa. I mean, just like Joyce said, from Nigeria, from Ghana, from Kenya, from Egypt, and from South Africa. Join us today to learn about how to pursue your interest in technology. Tech for Dev is a nonprofit that creates access to decent work and entrepreneurship opportunities and platforms for Africans through digital skills empowerment and advocacy. Our vision is to equip Africans with digital and life skills that foster economic prosperity, financial freedom, and sustainable development. The Women Texas is an initiative of Tech for Dev in partnership with Microsoft that aims to bridge the digital divide between men and women in the technology ecosystem. Through our pilot program, Nigerian Women Texas, we have enabled almost 3,000 women between the ages of 16 to 40 across Nigeria to ignite interest in pursuing careers and businesses in technology. Driven by the success story of numerous women on the program, we carved a new ambition and a dream to replicate this model across Africa by providing more women access to opportunities to launch careers in technology. Our dream by 2030 is to reach 5 million women in Africa by empowering them with the knowledge and requisite skills to partake in the technology industry in Africa and the world at large. We believe that by empowering change for women across Africa, as well as providing them opportunities to access employment and entrepreneurship, we will be able to achieve a 50-50 male to female ratio balance in the technology space. The Women Texas Open Day is a monthly virtual program. This is the third edition, right? Organized for women across Africa to learn about leveraging the power of technology to start and advance their careers and also create technology and technology enabled businesses. The Open Day is an opportunity for women to interact with other successful women who have built careers or businesses in technology over the years and who will share their personal experiences, speak about the possible career paths and business opportunities, as well as help women appreciate the importance of acquiring digital and deep tech skills in this digital age. We want to appreciate Microsoft for collaborating with us to bring this initiative to life. And we look forward to impacting and improving the economic realities of women across Africa. I would like to appreciate everyone once again for being here today. Uh, super excited to see you commence your journey in becoming women in tech. And I look forward to a wonderful and fruitful conversation. Thank you all. And over to you, Joy. Thank you very much, Dewira. In case you're just joining us, that was Dewira Oladipo. She's the executive director at Tech for Dev. And if you're just joining, just kindly put in your name and introduce yourself. Say, oh, I'm so and so joining in from Nigeria. Like, I am Joy from Nigeria. You are, I want to read it. I'm looking at the chat right now. I'm trying to. Hi, Sonia from Nigeria. I'm waiting. Keep it coming, ladies. Keep it coming. Shout out to Sonia. And the, the hashtag, Omodelako, hello. Hi, Kenny from Nigeria. Good evening, Kenny. The hashtag to use on your Twitter post is hashtag WT Open Day Match. Please tweet about the event. Hi. Okay. Usaki from South Africa. Hello. I'm so pleased to meet you today. Hi, Manuela. Hi, Taiwo. Hi, Onfile. I hope I pronounced your name well. Hi, Kai Esther Kuje from Nigeria. Hello. You're all welcome to the Women Texas Open Day event. You're welcome. Olufu Milola. Hi, Wanda. Wanda from Kenya. Hello. Hi, Ruthwell. This is the Women Texas Open Day Loud Date. Invite more women in your communities. Tell them about the Open Day events. Give them the link to register. And when they register, they'll get their unique passcode to join the meeting. Please do that. We need more women to hear about this. This is digital training. Hi, Faith from Nigeria. And the truth is that all our trainings are free of charge. You don't have to pay money. You'll be learning a lot from this meeting today. And I wouldn't want you to, learn, to just um, be selfish about this information. So please 
invite more women, tell them about the Open Day event, and let them join today. Okay, in case you're just joining, the Open Day event is organized for African women to learn about how to leverage technology for career and business growth. We're here to create awareness for you so that you'll know how to go about these things. I know many of you have been hearing about tech, 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 and you've been admiring people in tech. And the truth is that, there many, that there's room for more people in tech. The, the opportunities are out there. But if you don't have the required skills, you can assess these tech jobs. You know, and that's how we're having this open day event. Tech for Dev is taking steps to address gender disparities in Africa. And because we've discovered that the root of the matter is that from a very young age, most women view technology as something that is very difficult and that they are unfit for careers in STEM. So you see most women, you know, opting for um, to start a business or arts, arts courses or social sciences because they feel, oh, well, this is really hard. Economics is better or it's easier for me to, to, to learn. And that's why we're trying to address these issues. You know, the society positions STEM as something that is exclusive to boys. And this is why we have very few women venturing into STEM related careers. And this is not a function of our educational system. It starts at home where our mothers leave everything that is technical for their husbands and sons. You, you hear things like, oh, um, Joseph, you go and fix the TV. It's not working. Oh, you, um, Sandra, come into the room and come to the kitchen and help me. So we want to change that narrative. Ladies can fix TVs too. Ladies can fix um, um, radio sets. You understand? So um, this, this, this is why we are trying to train ourselves, train our daughters in the relevant skills for the future of work. Um, I'll just say a brief background of myself. I was also clueless about tech some two years ago, from three years ago, 2018. And I heard about the Women Texas Initiative. I'm a beneficiary of the Women Texas Initiative. I went through a boot camp and I acquired technical skills. And that was how I got my first job shortly after the boot camp. And today I work at Tech for Dev as a program associate in charge of the Women Texas Initiative. So the Nigeria Women Texas Initiative started in 2018 and we had a goal to train 2,400 women with digital skills. And today we've been able to train 2,475 women in Nigeria, across 12 states in Nigeria with um, digital skills. And some of our beneficiaries have been able to acquire jobs. And that's why we're doing this. For the next 10 years, we want to train 5 million women across Africa. For this year, we plan to reach 10,000 women in Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, Egypt, and Kenya. These are five countries. So if you are from Ghana, you're from South Africa, you're from Egypt, you're from Kenya, and you're from Nigeria, you're sure that you are at the right place because there's room for you. We have 5 million for the next 10 years, and we have 10,000 women to reach this year. And that's why we say you shouldn't be selfish with this information. For the next Open Day event, tell more women to come and listen, to come and learn how to advance their careers you know, with tech. I know with the COVID-19 um, pandemic that happened last year, many people lost their jobs. You know, most women are in the teaching profession. Many people lost their job because most classes have gone virtual. And if you don't have the skills to work, how do you get employed? And that's why um, we're having this open day event to create the awareness and to answer your questions. You don't know how to go about your career. You don't know how to venture into tech when you're interested. This is where you get the right information, and I'm so glad to have you here. In case you are just joining, please, please, please introduce yourself in the comment section. Write your name, your country, where you're coming from, and I will give a shout out to you. And you can tweet. When, when you tweet, please copy, tweet at Tech for Dev HQ. Tech T in capital letter E in small letter C in small letters, H in small letter D in capital letter E in small letter V in small letter. H and Q in capital letter. You see it in the comment section. It's written there. So please click um, tweet. Use the hashtag WT Open Day Match. Shortly, we'll be having a lineup of African women in tech that will be sharing their personal experiences. They'll speak about the career paths in tech and help you realize the importance of acquiring digital skills. You'll also be learning about all Women Texas program activities for the year and get ready to receive answers to all your questions. Hi, Stephanie from Kenya. I see you. Hi, Precious Samuel from Nigeria. Hi, Omide Odulami. Sorry if I miss your name, if I don't call your name. It doesn't mean that I've not seen you, but there's so many names to call out. So um, we're having on the panel Marisa Kuri. She's the head of data at RCS Group South Africa. 
We also have Oluwatoyi Sani. He's an AI researcher at University of Lincoln. And this session will be moderated by Dura Oladipo, the Executive Director at Tech for Dev. Enjoy. Hi, Dura. Hi, Joy, once again. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, so, just as you said, we have Marita. Hi, Marita. And hi, Oluwatoyi. Hi, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here with you today. All right, wonderful. So I think I would start right out by uh, introducing Marita and Oluwatoyi to everyone before we dive right into the panel. I know that we have a number of people who have a lot of questions for um, the panelists, but we would run through quickly just some questions and then we'll take a question and answers just right after. Um, so Marita Kari has worked in data analytics role uh, since 20, 2001. She has been focused on helping organizations both in South Africa and Australia to formulate and execute their data strategies since 2012 and became the head of data at financial services company RS, RCS Group in November 2019. BMP Bart um, Personal Finance owns the RCS Group and Maritza represents RCS within the M BNPPBF Chief Data Officer Community. In 2020, Corinum selected, oh wow, selected Marita as one of the global top 100 innovators in data and analytics. And Marita has an MBA from the University of Stellenbosch Business School. Welcome once again, Marita. Thank you, everyone. So happy to be here. Wonderful. So our Oluwatoyin Sani is currently a research scientist at the University of Lincoln, where she's working on research solutions that combine medical robotics, robot learning, and computer vision. She has a postgraduate degree in AI and robotics at Sapienza, University of Rome, Italy. Prior to her master's study, she had, she had a BSc in computer science and worked as a software engineer and a technical team lead at Andela before moving to further her studies. In her spare time, she mentors and volunteers with various organizations like Africa Code Week and Friend Look. Of recent, she has supported Code Your Future, which is an organization that set up weekend coding classes for refugees in Italy, UK, and other parts of Europe. In the past, she has co-founded two organizations that help women to embrace a career in tech and support teenage mothers in the slum. You're welcome, Olua Toy. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Hi, everyone. All right. Okay, so I will direct my very first question to Marita. Um, firstly, I mean, when I read your bio and I saw that I saw Corinium, I was like, oh my God, that is super, super interesting to have you like as one of the global top 100 innovators in data analytics for last year. I mean, congratulations once again, that is such a huge fit. And uh, it just made me curious to want to know, and I'm sure that there are a lot of other women out there who hear this and they're like, oh, wow, this is such a big deal. Like, this is a woman at the top of her career as uh, someone in data and analytics. And they want to know how you started your journey. What sparked that interest in, you know, going into data or starting out a career in data analytics and tech as a well? whole? So um, I actually didn't study IT or um any degree in STEM, actually. I have a BA in industrial psychology because, um, you know, when I was in high school in the 80s, uh, girls were definitely not encouraged to go into STEM jobs, for sure. And, um, you know, so when I went to university, um, I actually had limited choices in terms of what I could go study. And um, I changed careers when I was 26 and I went back to school and I studied IT. And that's when I actually got into IT. And um, it was, at the time, it was just before uh, the year 2000. And those of you who have been around as long as I have would remember the Y2K um, chaos that was happening. And at the time, there were so many jobs available in IT for junior developers. So um, I was a single parent at the time. I had a little boy and I wanted a future for him. 
I wanted financial stability for my son. So at the time, because Y2K was going on and there were all these jobs in IT, a lot of visibility around it, I thought, okay, maybe this is a good idea for me. And I went back to school and actually ended up third in my class. And that was the first time <laughs> that I actually had to confront the critical voice in my head that was socialized into me that said that women are not as good at technology jobs as men, because in fact, the top three people in, in the class were all women. And, um, you know, I got my first uh, job and on our first day, um, we were introduced to all the other uh, teams in IT. I was an application developer at the time. And we were introduced to the BI team. And I was like, wow, this is so glamorous because these guys work with marketing. This must be a great job, you know, to get into. And then I was very lucky. Three years later, um, I got into the data warehouse team. And that's really where my data and analytics career started. It's something that very quickly realized I love it. I love it and put a lot of effort into it put effort into understanding my job, understanding where I wanted to be in 10 years time, in 20 years time. And then I set about to learn the skills that was going to get me to my 10 year and 20 year goal. And I got there, I got there and now I've got new goals, but that's okay. So when I was nominated for top 100 in um, September last year, no, year before, I was just elated because it felt to me, this is 20 years of very hard work, lots of focus. And here is this amazing accolade. And I'm still, I'm, I, I still just smile when I think about it. I, you know, it still fills me with absolute joy um, that I have this accolade. And, and that's my journey. So lots of choices uh, along the way, very specific choices and having to address, like I say, that critical voice in my head that women cannot do these jobs. Oh, wow. Fantastic, uh, Maritza. I mean, just hearing your story is super inspiring. Uh, I mean, at 26, right, you made a very critical decision. To, not a lot of people do that. People just get stuck wherever they are and they don't have the courage to really pursue their goals or really pursue their interests because they feel, or oh, maybe perhaps I'm too old, maybe now that I have a kid, it's too late. And usually we find situations where women naturally make up excuses a lot for ourselves and reasons why we should not pursue what we want to pursue. Oh, I have a kid, it's not possible. I have a couple, I have two kids. Uh, they need me now more than ever. You know, I, I, can, I can spend all the time in the world right now. I'm old, I should definitely just do this maybe in my next life if possible. And it's super exciting to hear your story and hear how you made that critical decision at that point in time in, in your life. And I mean, looking back now, I mean, it's definitely paid off for it. And I mean, this is super interesting insights. And to the women out there today, I just want to say that, I mean, age is not a barrier, you know, to your goals. Uh, whatever stage you are in life doesn't mean that you cannot dream as far as you want to be. And just hearing Maritza tell her story is just, it, it just gives that sort of encouragement to you to know that you can literally do anything you want to do at any point in time and don't let anybody tell you anything less right uh thank you so much maritza so i would uh move quickly to olua toy who has somewhat like a different but exciting background as well toy studied computer science as an undergrad uh, so our story is a bit different from Marita's story, who didn't have a tech background originally but i wanted to just find out interesting is when you were deciding to go to the University of Luatoi, how did you make up your mind to pursue like a degree in computer science? And after that, also because, for example, I do have friends, I know people who studied computer science as undergraduate, uh, as, uh, during the undergraduate and never pursued a career in that line. So it would be interesting to hear how you made that decision when you decided that you wanted to go into computer science, you want to study computer science as an undergrad. And then when you finished uh, as an undergrad, 
how you decided that you wanted to pursue a career within technology, a core career within technology? Ah, uh, interesting question. <laughs> um, for me, it's a, a bit weird and different from Marita Soria, like you said. I had an access to a computer at the age of 11, and I've always been that girl who always liked to, you know, stay in front of the of front of the computer. So I had my brother, like an uncle, who when he goes to the side, that, those were the days where we used the diskettes, Windows 98, <laughs> you know, when we carried those things around, then it was not portable as it is now. And I was always just very attracted to the computer. At that time, I didn't know about programming or the careers that you can do with computer science, of course, but I, I was always attracted to it. I already know basic things that when they teach it in school, I could relate to it because we had a computer at home. So when it was time for my um, bachelor's, it was just straightforward. I knew that this is something that light, light me up. Like I remember sometimes my grandmom would seize the mouse or she would seize the keyboard so that because I was very addicted to it, even though at that time I was, you know, using it to play games, using then I was using it to type as well. So I was learning how to type. I was using it for things that were not really, you know, yeah, just random things. But I knew that I like this thing. I like this device. I'm curious about how it works. And, you know, this is just what I want to do. However, something changed when I went into, because I'm a very practical learner. So when I got into university, it was so theoretical for me. So I actually felt I made a mistake. So I'm like, this is so different from, I thought I was just, they would just give me a computer and the things that I used to do at home is what I was just going to continue. But it was physics, maths, chemistry, you know, and I'm like, what, what am I doing here? I think I made a mistake, but you know, I couldn't drop out, you know, Africa, we want to please our parents and those things. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to finish so that I would say, okay, I have a, I have a degree, you know, from computer science. And by the time I was done, the most shocking thing is I was into music. I was writing music. I was doing OAP. <laughs> that is an online air personality. I was doing radio shows. I was playing the guitar. <laughs> I was just so, I was like, this comes to style. I don't think it's for me. I think I just like the computer and that is the end of it. That's the end of it. But during the time that I finished my um, degree, I um, watched a movie. Uh, which was uh, it, it's titled Person of Interest. I don't know if, and I'm just going to briefly explain. So the series was uh, actually um, after uh, after the it was modeled after the September night bombing in in the US, and the US government um, recruited this computer science professor to predict the act of crime before it occurs. So it was it was like oh it was a movie anyway, but it was just modeled after that story. Like we want to know when a crime will occur. So I was watching the series and it became interesting to me because the theoretical knowledge that you know they were teaching us in school began to make sense because the movie the computer science professor would mention some topics and what he's doing like you know all those movies where they are mentioning some things and it's just lighting you up and helping you understand the theory that they are teaching you in school so that kind of brought me to our an awareness that oh so this and this can be merged together and this is what this is how data science works this is how nlp works natural language processing this is how computer vision works so i merged those things together and became interesting for me so after i was done i started meditating on these things that i have seen in the movie and how the things that i've been taught in school was you know making sense together so when I started serving, I had this uh, manager. So uh, for those who are not from Nigeria, we have this youth um, service. It's like a military kind of uh, <laughs> uh, training that you, it's compulsory for you after your bachelor's degree. So I, I was it's in one year. So I was in the university serving in the, in the IT um, unit. And one day my, my manager called me because to be fair, I used to run away from coding while I was in school. I had friends who were very good at it and they would chase me and say, come and learn HTML, come and learn CSS. And I'm like, no, it's for the Albert A stain. I don't think I qualify to know how to do this thing. So I always run away from it. So my manager called me and he said, Tony, I, you were very smart. You're a very smart person. And I think this is the time you need to be very intentional about your career. And that is one word that has changed my life forever. 
because you know when you when you get validation from someone who has been there from a senior person from a manager who who sees beyond your weakness and say i you can do this and i want it to be intentional so when he told me that i was like really i always run from this thing and that just changed the whole game for me and then i started looking into the fields in computer science what i wanted to do and that was actually how my journey into tech started Oh, wow, that's, that's also a very exciting uh, journey that you did give us. I mean, it just there's a there's a lot in there to learn. I mean, you said it was, when, you were, when you're talking about being, you used to, uh, you were playing the guitar, you know, you were an OAP. I was like, okay, this is, this is very exciting. It also shows that, I mean, you could be in a particular line and then you could have like other interests. But what I hear you say, or what just came across to me is also the importance of having a mentor, right? And I can see a couple of people just putting in there talking about mentorship, right? The importance of having a mentor in this uh, journey, it's very, it's super, super important because you need people who are looking out for you, people who have gone ahead of you, who can and hold you through the process and say, I know that you think that this is difficult, but it's not as difficult as it is. I know I have an example of a friend who was going to learn Python. And then the first class was like, she was like, oh my God, no, this is not for me. This is too difficult. I don't even think that I'm going to be able to cope. But you know, with the proper mentor in place, just and holding and saying, I've done it, right? I'm here, I've done it. And I've made it as far as this. You can also do it. You can also make it. It's even if it's tough at the beginning, right? It gets better over time. And I just, your story literally just tells us that because you did tell us about the beginning part. I know we'll be engaging more about what your journey has been even to you did, but now seeing you being an AI researcher, I mean, that's an interesting journey. It doesn't quite, you know, you think about it and you're like, oh, this is someone who said, ah, uh, I'm not sure coding is for me at the beginning. And then who has now moved like, Light as that because I mean AI is for me right. I mean people might people might disagree, but AI is indeed the future of technology, and it'll be very exciting when I come back to you to hear some of your uh, sort of like story around how you really really got here, and then also to just engage people on ideas behind what is AI really. It sounds like a buzzword. It sounds like a word that everybody just talks about. Oh, AI, AI. It's, it's a word that, you know, when you enter a room and you want to sound super smart, you say, oh, ah, I know about AI, I know about machine learning. And then those words are those words that, that become like buzzwords that nobody really knows about. But exciting. And I'll be coming right back to you, Lua, telling you thank you. Uh, back to Marita. I mean, for me, and part of my engagement working as a woman in tech as well, uh, data analysis is a very sensitive, uh, would I say area in technology. A lot of organizations, and I know this also from some of the graduates that we've had across our program, uh, find it difficult to hire entry-level talent into data analysis world because of sensitivity, right? If something goes wrong and then you, you use the data wrongly or the data predicts something wrongly, then it becomes a huge challenge. Uh, so there might be a number of people, both women and men, but now that we have a group of women here who are skeptical about going into a career in data, right? In data analysis or in data science, for example, because they are worried about, I don't have enough experience. I'm probably just hearing about this and I'm just about to start to learn this. So when I'm done learning, does that mean that I'm going to learn for the next three years before I'm able to get a job? What does that really look like? So it'll be interesting to hear your opinion on this around, if I want to start an entry level career in data, do I need all the years of experience in the world? What should I really be looking out for that would allow me to be able to succeed uh, as I launch my career in data? So it's, it's definitely um, a challenge for people who enter data and analytics um to get that experience because yes there is definitely an expectation from most organizations if they're going to put someone into a very responsible data science or analytics role 
you know, they mostly they will be looking for in, intermediary to senior people. But most organizations, and indeed the, my organization, um, realize that we need talent pipelines, especially for our data and anal analytics talent. So there's, there's also um, a lot of companies who want to bring more junior people into their organizations because they want to make sure that they will have that talent and that capability and they will build that capability over the next three to five years. So there's definitely opportunities. Um, I also think that a lot of companies um, have a place for more junior data scientists and analysts because the reality is that intermediary to senior analysts want to do the more interesting work. So they don't want to do the, the manual parts of the job anymore. They, they want to do the, the analysis, build the models, train the models, um, tell the story, um, you know, engage with the exec. That's, that's where they are in their career. So there's a place for more junior people to do the, the manual jobs. And there's still quite a few manual jobs in the data science or the analytics life cycle. So um, integrating the data, for example, or automating data pipelines, you know, that's, that's the kind of the job that sometimes you have to start with so that you can get the experience and grow into an intermediary or senior resource. My advice to people who's entering or want to enter the industry is to use LinkedIn as a resource because, you know, my day, I didn't have LinkedIn. So I, I still had to look for a job in the newspaper, <laughs> which is almost unthinkable these days. Hey, but make sure you've got a profile on LinkedIn. Do your research on how LinkedIn search engines work so that you know what kind of um, uh, sort of search terms you need to put in your profile because there's a way that um, the recruiters find you. They use LinkedIn analytics, for example, and they look for specific things in your profile. So make sure that you do that, that you have a very good profile with a very professional photo. Um, make sure that you you understand that you clear, and I think um, Toyin said it, be intentional about your career. Know which companies you want to work for, and then you follow those companies. You register on the HR um, uh, portal. You send your CV. You put in the effort, because if you don't put in the effort, the opportunity is not going to come your way. You've got to go look for those opportunities. You've got to make them happen. So follow people, link with people like me, you know, and even ask the people you link to, people you admire, can I have a 30 minute discussion with you? You know, open up the conversation. That is how people are finding jobs in data analytics. In fact, in most um, industries now is through networking not by posting your CV on a career website. So it's just not that easy. You're going to have to put in the effort. Thank you, Maritza. I mean, uh, and if there was anyone here who attended the second edition of the Women Texas, of the Women Texas Open Day, that's what we had last month, very similar insight to what Maritza just mentioned was clearly stated. I feel like LinkedIn is like, the world's next powerful platform or tool that everyone needs to know how to effectively annex because annexing it is going to help you go a long way in your career and very interesting nuggets that marita around and then i was just penning down some of the things you were saying you were speaking about about knowing the companies that you want to work for i feel like a lot of people out here were just like oh they're like oh i want to get a job in data and you're like okay what companies are you looking out for they're like well any company and you're like any company is no company do you have certain people that you look up to that you want to you know that sort of like role models to you do you have certain organizations that it is that you want to work with like you said marita you need to do the job you need to do the legwork right for there to be for you to get to the point where you're able to then 
be able to say that I, I am now a data analyst. I'm going to start. And I like what you said. Sometimes it doesn't start out all rosy at every point in time, right? Sometimes it seems like you might need to do some of the manual jobs to get to where it is that you're going to. But eyes on the go always, right? It's just, this is where I want to be. It doesn't matter where I'm starting out from right now. It, it's, it's possible that I can get here because I can see Marita. Marita is here, right? She's here. And then I want to be like Marita in the next 10, 20 years, right? And if she can do it, I can do it as well. Thank you so much, Marita. Interesting. I'm having a few day today, just listening to all these interesting nuggets of advice, just coming out from our panelists today around how to position yourself, right? Uh, if you are going to start a career in tech. Moving over to our Olua Toy. Uh, I mean, uh, looking over at your bio again i see that you work with andela and i know that a number of people here would know andela quite a number of people would know here andela is that company where a lot of young people want to work because they're like oh this is an epitome of an exciting organization that is international or global and it's an organization that you know i would i i aspire to work with for a number of people here so it would be interesting to hear how you uh and then of Angela, right? Was this deliberate? Would you chart a path towards uh, getting there? Uh, that would be that would be something that I'm sure that a number of people want to know. Oh, okay, I will try my best to do justice <laughs> justice to the question. So, um, when I was seven, like the, I'm just I'm just going to begin this journey from my service year. So after my service year, I was retained at the university and I was working as an IT support technician. So it was more of a repairing computer. But on the side, I was learning how to code. And um, I had, like I said, I had a friend in, from university who was always chasing me. So I remember the day I called him and I said, you know what, this thing, I'm ready to do it. He was super excited. So he, he, he sent materials and resources to me and I started learning and I would send my code to him via email. Then there was no really a lot of code peering and you know programming peer, peer programming um, apps at that time so i'll send it by email to him and he will review why there is a bug he will tell me the line why there is a bug there i should change it so i, I was doing that consecutively and he saw some um seriousness from me with how i was engaging him with, with the materials that he has sent so one day he just called me and said you know what there is a company, Andela, I think you should apply to it. I, I think you should, um, you know, get into that company and I'm sure you're going to do great. I remember when I saw the, the so he sent the flyer of the advertisement to me and I saw a lady there. I saw a lady there and she's still my very good friend today anyway. And what, what, what was there was, um, my application is going to, is going to change the face of Nigeria and Africa. That was what was on there and i saw it it was a very bold statement from a woman you know because i i was like oh okay for someone to make that bold statement then that means this company is doing something so i i i started reading about andela and everything how i was going to get prepared who, who i'd gotten there already where i can keep in touch with i was already in the system and you know i was preparing for the interview so I was then, I was in Kwara State. So for those also out of Nigeria, Kwara State is about a four to five hours drive to where the company is. So I knew that I had to take some excuse from work to go for the interview. And I already had the, so AI has been the goal for me. So for some people, they went into software, software engineering and then they, 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 they stumbled across AI and decided to go into it. For me, it was like, um, from that movie that I watched, AI was like where I knew I was, what I wanted to work in. But I knew that to get to that level of working in AI, there were some fundamentals that were needed. And I knew that coding was part of that fundamental. I can't be an AI researcher or I can't work in the AI industry without having a solid background of programming. And Andela was providing that. So I knew that, okay, this is the part I want to go. And Andela is like one of the stones for me to get there. So I put in all my efforts. I was actually ready to leave my work. I was that 
that very desperate. Like, you see this Angela, this company, I'm going to get into it. So I was ready to resign. My Maybe that was foolish, I don't know. <laughs> but I was ready to resign. I was, because I knew that they were having this, um, like in a year, Angela was recruiting like four times. So I it was more of, if I don't get it, the next the next intake will be there. Until they will, they're going to see my face at every interview until they say, take this letter and join our company. So I was that very desperate and ambitious to get into Andela. And I put in the work. Uh, there was a two weeks boot camp and I was faithful to doing, it was very stretching. That was like one of the most stretching points of my life because it was a boot camp. I had not really been grounded in coding and they were asking me to build a calculator in two weeks. So that was very, very different from, you know, everything that I've known. And, you know, I was giving it the efforts and at the end of the two weeks, I got the offer to get into Andela. Now, the story that most people don't know, and I feel like um, that is something that is a bit missing when we are mentoring. If you have a mentor who is not also showing you a side of how they have struggled, I think that is not good enough. I feel like we have a lot of success stories out there and they, they put an impression of, you know what, this career was just, I was just climbing the ladder and I was just there, but it wasn't so. At my very first month in Mandela, I was actually put on probation and was almost let go. This is a story that most people don't hear. And I remember I was very, very, very doubtful of myself. And that was the point I knew how to self-motivate because at that point, there was nobody I could, you know, when something happens to you and you don't even know how to explain to the people that will motivate you, you are, you are, the, you are it's like you're just the only one in that circle and you're the only one that understands yourself. So I knew how to kind of just self-motivate myself and say, you know what, I can do it. People will not always be there to them. Of course, I'm not on the, on the playing the role of mentors and people who cheer you on, but there are times where you get to a point where you have the one that I have to tell yourself, I can do this. So for that one month, I was put on probation and I was almost going to be fired. I think that is the word. I was almost going to be fired. But I I, I had sleepless nights. I, I talked to people who were already ahead of me in the same Andela. And, you know, day by day, I started growing my confidence. And I remember the very last day that was my last chance where I was going to like, be in front of a panel and they can just throw any question at me and I have to answer. Remember how, how shaky I was, like this is the defining moment of my career. If they sack me, I think I'll just go back to, I can't code. And, but as everything would turn out, I passed the, the test and that was how my journey began. Then I took it, I know you didn't ask this, but I took it a step further to challenge myself. And that was when I now co-founded Tech in Pink because I felt like most, we don't really hear the, the struggles that we, we go through when we are starting this phase. We don't really hear how we had sleepless night and all of that. So Tech in Pink was like a phase for me to tell my story and say, you know what? I struggled with coding. I thought I was never going to be able to do this, but because I put in time, I put in the effort, I surrounded myself with people who would teach me, I was able to get to this level. So yes, I think uh, I've answered the question. <laughs> oh my God, that's very, I mean, one of the last things you said is, I felt like a toggle in my heart because it's one of the conversations that I usually just have with uh, people around me to say, there are a lot of flawed stories out there when it comes to definition or defining a path, like how you move from zero to seven or how you move from zero to 10. A lot of times people leave out, just as you said, people leave out the most crucial part. They leave out the part of the pain. They focus on the part of the glory, right? Which was that, oh, I started out as this and now I'm this. So they move the, take that story, that grass in quotes to great story with leaving out the components of the fact that there's actually a pain in this journey right there are times when everything won't be okay and a lot of times we don't have that in i just when, when you mentioned that i just penned that down and said vulnerability in mentorship that's how i thought about it to say how can people be vulnerable right with other people so as young people who are on this call as well women who are on this call when you move from this point right where you're just learning to or where you're just starting your career and trying to understand what you want to do 
when you move to the point where you've had a good understanding of that par that particular line that you've chosen would you be willing to tell the story would you be willing to say oh there was a time i was clueless i didn't know what uh, ai was or i didn't know what data was and i attended a session and that session pretty much changed my life or changed the way i thought about things so thank you very very much Oluwatoyin. very interesting insights that i'm coming back right back to you uh marita <laughs> yeah so um i mean for me you said when you were speaking the other time you know you talked about using platforms you know um and applying oneself to the work that one does um and i'm sure that a lot of women out here might be will be curious about this question that i want to ask you is i have interest in data right or i've heard there's data data i mean data is a word that everybody uses right it talks about data and i hear that in tech there is a field that is focused on data but i'm not quite sure how to navigate maybe perhaps i feel like so for people who are mathematically inclined right or quantitative inclined they feel like oh maybe data is my thing because i mean i'm a math guru or i'm a statistic guru right and that and that's where i was right so my question is sort of two-pronged the first part is what really is a career in data what what is what what does a career in data look like if i were to start out a career in data what what would i be getting myself into that's the first part of the question and the second part is more what are somewhat like where i would call them sort of key success factors to survive if i were to start out a career in data right what would that be? What, what would make me, what are the things I need to look out for? Or what are the things, or what are the areas that I need to be good at? Or I really need to have knowledge of for me to succeed if I decide to pick a career path in uh, data. And the last part <laughs> I would say is maybe you might want to expand a bit on what career possibilities exist if the women out here are looking for, are looking to start out in, in data. Yeah. You know, I'm so glad you asked this question um, or your first question, because, um, yes, there is definitely a debate in the industry um, in terms of, OK, you do you have to be a math guru to go into data analytics or, you know, an IT career, don't you? So I was terrible at math. I, I had to drop <laughs> from a high, um, higher grade to standard grade in um, high school. Otherwise, I wouldn't have um, passed math. I had art as a subject at school. In fact, I wanted to go to university to study art. So I personally do not believe that you have to be a guru at math and science to go into an IT career. Obviously, if you're going to study biochemistry, maybe you should have an affinity for math and science. But there are so many different careers, and this is getting to answering your first questions. There are so many different careers in IT um, and just in data and analytics, and not all of them have the, the same requirements. So if you want to be a data scientist, yes, then you are going to be required to have a math or a science or an affinity for math and science but if you decide but i i'm more interested in a different career i i love i'm i'm an artist i'm artistic i want to be creative then development is a great um career choice for you because i feel the combination of being able to think logically and bring creativity into solving really complex problems is a great combination. And in fact, some of the best developers that I've worked for had more of a creative start to their careers. My husband, for example, he's, he's a developer, but he started off as an architect. So he had audit school as well, but he's a phenomenal developer now and he loves it. So he's also bringing that creativity to um, his technical career there's data visualization you know one of the careers that's that's really starting to emerge is the data data storyteller or the data translator um there's definitely an emergence of 
um, visualizing data stories. So those types of jobs require creative people, not necessarily people with a data or um, a, a science or math background. So it really is about understanding what's my, not only what is your strength, but what brings you joy because that's what's going to make you successful. That's what's going to make, help you make the right choices in terms of your career. And, you know, if you go into STEM, you're so lucky because there's loads of different uh, jobs that you can choose from. So my advice to the ladies um, on this uh, webinar is understand what's going to make you happy because your job's going to make you happy as well. So for me, the part that makes me happy about my job is, of course, the, the creativity of it because information has to be beautiful. So I indulge in that, believe me, on a daily basis. Um, to answer your second question of what, what does it take to be successful in a IT or technical career? Um, yes, you have to be able to actually do your job. So you have to be able to do the technical component of your job or the functional component of your job. But what we are seeing more and more in organizations is that we want people who do not have that very traditional IT profile of, okay, the business is the business and IT is IT. IT is the dark arts and no one should get involved in what we do. We certainly do not want to really have anything to do with the business. So what we look for, what I look for when um, I recruit is people who can build relationships. And people who, and that doesn't mean you have to be the most outgoing person in the world, but people who care about other people because we don't deliver in isolation in IT or in data and analytics. We do it through partnerships and through making sure that what we deliver has value. And the only way you know what you deliver has value is if you've actually engaged with the business and with other people and other teams. So soft skills definitely something that is required if you're going to be um, successful in a technical career um the third question remind me what was the third question i think you've touched on the part of the third question you answered it when you were talking about the the pathways uh, yes within, yes you did man you did you, you did touch on that already when you talked so maybe about i can just close it out um, in data and analytics specifically, um, there's three pathways. There's the, the data specifics, so very technical ETL developers, data engineers, machine learning engineers, etc. So people who code. Then there's the analytics stream. There you've got your BI analysts, you've got data scientists, but you also have BI business analysts. And that's an interesting career if you do not want to code and but you love data and you love analytics but that's not the job you want to do then bi business analysis or data translator there's different names for it and then the last um career path very very topical at the moment with ai and data ethics is data governance so if you love um sort of policies and rules and change management and helping people to change the way that they do things, then data governance is a great career for you. So I've seen a lot of people who are interested in psychology, for example, who are really good at data governance because data governance is all about people. So these, th those are kind of the three main career paths, I would say, in data and analytics. Thank you so much, Marit. So that's super helpful. I feel like we need to have like a masterclass on the career opportunities that exist in data because this is super exciting, right? Um, I am not, I, I do not, I do not have any background in data, but just hearing like the different like options, I always thought that I as well, I'd always thought that all oh, the data part, you know, you just had to always focus on, you know, you need, you need to learn how to code, right? To actually work like within the data space. But hearing what you said about, you know, the different options that exist. And I love one particular thing that you said, where you said, understand what makes you happy. I feel like a lot of times people lose that in between their starting out their career or looking for a job. People are just like, oh, I'm just going to 
do i'm just gonna do whatever brings me the most money for example or whatever it is that looks exciting that makes me look smart or makes me look intelligent without actually carefully thinking about the fact that you need to do what makes you happy it's what makes you happy that makes you excel it's what makes you happy that makes you get to the top of your career and it's what makes you to be able to effectively give back to others so very exciting nuggets marita thank you and I'm coming over to Oluwatoi quickly and coming, I will come back to the final question, just to wrap up in the interest of time. But I'll take this question first before coming back to Marita and Toyin again for a final question. So Toyin, what is AI really? Like, what is AI? What is, I've heard different terminologies, artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning, I've heard all sort of things, but I know that those other subcomponents are embedded under AI. I'm right, right? So what really is AI? And then what career options as well also exist in AI? If I if I hear the explanation and I'm like, this AI sounds like something that I want to do, what career options exist for me in AI? And lastly, just very similar to what I asked Marita is, what are the success factors, right? If I want to launch or start a career in AI, what do I need to know? Or what knowledge base do I need to have? What do I need to know uh, that would make me succeed if I were to start a career in AI? Okay. AI is simply artificial intelligence, <laughs> as we all know. Um, but to give a broader perspective on that, it's basically when you give uh, intelligence. So that is why it's called artificial, because we humans, when we are growing up, we start from child uh, childhood and based on our environment, based on the factors and the things that we're exposed to, our, intel our IQ increases by time, the knowledge increases by time. But what if we can, you know, as humans, you you learn this thing as you grow up. You you know the the things in your environment, the data in your environment, the things that you're taught informs your knowledge base. I say so. We we AI is basically okay. Can we give a machine the same intelligence? Over the years, we've gathered data. Over the years, we've gathered knowledge. So, is there a way we can just prepare this data and just give? give it to this um, machine and based on the data we have given the machine, it can make informed decisions. It can do things that um, maybe will take 10 years to teach someone who is just born and all of that. So yeah, AI is <laughs> basically artificial intelligence. Artificial, the word artificial is because it's not natural. It's not like you 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 give the system like baby steps and all of that. You you bombard the system with what you have and you allow it to do what um, you've trained it to do. And yes, on that AI, we have like um, computer vision. Computer vision is, um, Things when when you so I'm just so when I'm talking about some of these concepts because I know that we have a variety of audience I will try to like give a very um, simple example that falls under this category I hope that's fine so for example we have okay cool for example we have like computer vision right um, computer vision can be applied to face detection for example if if you see if, if you have watched some of these um, crime movies or something how how do how do someone puts an email image in the system and they are able to you know go through thousands and millions of other faces and figure out that this face belongs to this person that is computer vision that is an example of computer vision computer vision is also using things like maybe self-driving cars how does the um when when the car is driving how does it stay on the same lane how does it identify a red light how does it identify a green light how does it know when to stop how does it know when it sees a cat and stop or a human and it stops and all of those are computer vision now we have another aspect of um natural language processing so for some of you who maybe um have been uh, you found yourself in places where they don't speak your language now natural language processing is what that aspect where if you go to google translate you type something in english it gives you your uh, it gives you the the um language that you want in um you know Natural language processing is also used in things like um, voice recognition. So if someone speaks, they, they use it in crime detection as well. So from someone's voice, can they identify? Maybe there was no camera in that crime scene and it's only the voice that you heard. Can you detect who this voice belongs to? So those, are, um, th those belong to natural language processing. And then we have like 
different on that other aspects we have the machine learning and somehow all of these are just subs they are kind of intertwined <laughs> you know but i don't want to like go to technical with jargons because these are things that you I mean you could really go online and check but those are like the two top i would say the two top rising um you know um, um fields in ai and um, the other one is like reinforcement learning which is even a subset of machine learning itself and you know they are i don't want to really you know bore <laughs> many of us about these fields but they are they are like different aspects of ai you also have the control part which is the robot part of it where you give intelligence to um to a robot to to do a task and all of that and um you had the third question if i missed it please remind i know i have missed it's, if you can remind me, please. <laughs> okay, so the third question was just, uh, what um, what are the if I want to start a career in AI, mm, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. do I? How do I? How do I? How, how do, do I start? What are the success factors ah, for me? To this start? is uh, this is very interesting, and I'll say this because I have friends who are in AI wouldn't take my path. So it is wrong for me to come and say, you know what, just do A, B, C, D, and um, boom, you 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 are into AI. But I would say like the fundamental thing, first of all, is a can-do attitude. You, you, please, I have to put that as number one. Can-do attitude is very important. Then I can also talk about the things like you, there's no how you, you want to go into AI and you, you really can't code. So when I mean, you, you can work as, a, for example, a product manager for an AI product or a project manager for an AI product and all of that. But now I'm talking about deep, like when you are coding intelligent um, system, building intelligent model, there's no way you can do that without a background in coding. And I would say the, the very language that is used in AI that is most common is, AI, um, is Python. Of course, people use C++ as well, but most of, I've not written C++ since I started you know, this journey in AI. It has always been Python. Python is like the, the very first language that you are required to learn. Now, what at what level should you be? I would say maybe immediate, um, a, an intermediate level of programming. You know, and then the other thing as well is mathematics. I'm not going to lie, you need some maths, especially if you're going into the research world, because in the research world, you are coming up with new concepts, you are coming up with new architectures, you, you're building things from scratch, and there is no way you want to build because the things that we build, they are all based on math. It's just like we are turning the math to code. I think that's the best way I can really describe it. We are turning the math to code, you get. So you, you need a mathematics background. And like I said, I, when I mentioned this thing, I already see people, I mean, I don't have a physical audience. I have a virtual audience, but I know when I stand physically with audience, they, you already see that look on their face when, when they hear math or they hear all those things. I want to say, I really want to plead and say and really highlight that it is very very learnable there is nothing that you can learn if i i always say if i me if i can learn it anybody can anybody can so i don't want you to get scared and say oh they said math is here so and i'm running away from math or something it is something that is easy to learn so you need the mathematical background you also need some bit of statistics not a lot it depends on what aspect of ai that you're working with but you also need some level of statistics because when you are evaluating the code you are writing when you are evaluating the the models that you are building you need the statistical background to evaluate some of some of the models so you you, you need a bit of statistics as well and then a little bit of programming and from those three basic things i feel like everybody's good to go and how did i start I started by first of all getting a mentor. That was very important. I looked for someone who was already in the field and I had them send me courses, free courses on Udacity. It's not, it's not composite that you have to pay for courses. So there were free courses on Udacity that I followed. And from there, I built a project. So I, I looked for something that I was interested in. So I didn't just stop because there is the aspect of learning. Like I always 
tell some of the people that I mentor, there is the aspect of learning. And there's also something that gives you joy when you outlet that learning. When you see the skills that you are learning, you, you are seeing it in practice. There's that joy that it gives you than just learning and you're not even, you know, outletting it out. So you, 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 you think of a problem that you want to solve or a problem that is dead to your heart. So that was something that I did. And based on my knowledge, I started looking into that topic and it gave me even more uh, more valid reasons to, to learn and also to, you know, outlet that thing, the knowledge that I'm gaining from the courses that I took. So those were two things that really helped me. And after that, I, I decided to go for my master's. And I wouldn't lie, why I decided to go for my master's was because I was applying for jobs after I did the Udacity Nano degree and already had one, I felt like, oh, I'm there. I should just get jobs. But it wasn't straightforward for me. I applied to many companies and it turned out that most of them wanted, even for internship, they were not accepting, you know, they were not accepting my applications. So it got frustrating and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go for a master's in this. And now I've seen those open based on the degree, but I'm not saying, that's why I said, I don't want to like say this is one way because I have fr I have a friend who works with Netflix as a, as a machine learning engineer without a bachelor's. Without a bachelor's, he doesn't even have a degree, but he works with Netflix and is one of their top engineers. I can tell you this for fact. I even go to him to get knowledge. And what has he done that is different is that he was able to get into a company who sees value even as someone who have basics. So there are times that, you know, you fall into that space where someone sees value in you, even when you don't really have much to offer. And from there, they take you up. But there are some cases you may not even see that. And you have to take yourself up by yourself before you are being you know, open to opportunity. So you, that's why I started with the can-do attitude because there is no one way. There are many obstacles that may come in one day, one way, and you have to like shift your focus to another way. Yep. So I do hope I answered <laughs> the question. Yes, you most definitely did. And one interesting nugget that I picked out was when you did mention, you had mentioned the mathematics and the coding background but well, you said something very powerful around having a country attitude and i feel i believe that with that country attitude it's what's going to propel you even if this is not even if you are struggling with math before or you felt like coding was not for you once you have a can-do attitude it helps you to just be able to propel yourself towards your dream and goals and i would just uh i would just quickly just also just move over to the last part of my questions before i take any questions um from we have quite a number of questions oh my god 22 questions i think i'm just going to try and pick one of the questions amongst all of this um okay so i so okay so final question from me before we move over to, to just pick a couple of questions from the q a session is this is starting from Arita. if you have just one word or maybe not one word if you have if you were to give a word of advice to a young woman who is starting, just starting out a career in tech, what would that advice be? My advice would be is that as a woman in tech, you will have plenty of challenges. You will have plenty of people who tell you you can't do it. Don't be one of them. Don't listen to the critical voice in your head. Believe in yourself. Believe in your dream, believe in your uh, personal vision, and go for it. Oh, wow. That's, that's, that's just absolutely powerful. I feel like I could frame that. <laughs> I just put it on my wall. I keep looking at it every day. I mean, just go for it. Believe in yourself. Thank you so much, Marita. That's super fantastic. Over to you, Toyin. Just one word of advice uh, for Amarita, please keep your video on. Uh, over to you, Toy. One word of advice for a young woman who is starting a career. Oh, in tech. This is hard. Okay, let me see which one. Which one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it would be let your gender, let your skills speak louder than your gender. I think it's. Wow. Yeah. Okay. 
I mean, that's another frameable coat. I mean, I feel like I'll just have this right behind me here. I'm going to have Maritza's <laughs> coat and Toy's coat just staying there and giving inspiration to all. But super fantastic. I mean, believe in yourself. Go for it. Those are Maritza's words. I mean, then Toy's words are, let your skills speak for you. Let it, you are first a human being. I had someone say this to me once. Say, you're first a human being before you're a man or woman. Right. So when people come into a room, they're not going to say, oh, the first question they'll ask is not how many men are out there or how many women are out there. The first thing they'll say, how many people are here? So they say, oh, there are people. Then they're like, how many men and how many women? So it's your first human before you're a woman. Right. And you need to think about that at every point in time to say, I need to build my skills. I need to own my skills. Such that when I walk into a room before we people before before people think of me, I mean, see Marita, see the kind of feats she's been able to achieve. I highly doubt that she achieved those feats just because she's a woman. She achieved those feats being Marita, a human, a person, first before being a woman. I just feel that those are super wonderful nuggets for us today thank you so much marita thank you tony i will take a couple of questions i can't take too many uh and i'm just quite hopeful that um i mean maybe perhaps uh the people here could reach out to you perhaps maybe on social media you could give us both marita and tony you could give us which of the platforms you feel most com comfortable with for anybody to reach out to you if they have specific questions that are tailored to you um that we will not be able to answer because it might be tough to answer 23 questions right here because of interest of time so i would take uh just quickly let me look at and apologies to everyone this is in no order i'm just going to take the ones that are quickest for me to see here uh and i would okay so let me just go real quick um Okay, so someone says here, so this is to Maritza, right? Someone says, I'm so inspired by, I think this is, uh, I, I would not, pardon me, uh, I will choose your latter name so that I do not, <laughs> I do not misspell or mispronounce your first name. I think this is Mun Munesha. I think that's how it's pronounced, but apologies if not. Um, I'm so inspired by Maritza Curry's story. I'm turning 26. This person is turning 26, says, I'm turning 26 this year. And I studied something completely different. I studied accounting and finance. I would like to know more about our career change journey. Where can I access? Where can we access our full biography? Or can Miss Marita elaborate more on the steps she took to change our career? And may she advise on perhaps the steps I should take as well. Over to you, Marita. So thank you for that and uh, for very positive feedback. And um, I understand the, the quarter life crisis because like you say, I was there myself. Um, so like I said, I was very clear on where I wanted to go with my career. So I would say that's the first thing is have a very clear personal vision for yourself and then make decisions and choices based on that. So I knew I had to go study. I knew IT was a skill I didn't have, so I had to go back to school. So that was the first thing. Um, once I was in an application, I, I was an application developer starting off, um, I had to make decisions around, okay, what's the next step for me? Do I want to stay in application development or do I want to go into a different direction? Now, I was lucky because I knew I wanted to go into data and analytics, but I did the work to see where are the opportunities. I talked to people in my company and I was clear, this is what I want to do. And when the opportunity presented itself, I was actually given that opportunity because I had talked to people. I did all that networking. I opened myself up to the opportunity. Now, like I say, in those days, this is 20 years ago, we didn't have a LinkedIn. You know, my network was the company that I worked in. Now, that's not a bad place to start if you want to build a career is in the company that you are in. And I love all the conversations about mentorship because I think that's really important to attach yourself to someone who can help you within your organization or 
to attach yourself to a mentor who's outside your organization, who's maybe someone in the industry who could help you build your career in the industry. So I, again, very lucky had amazing mentors, people who not only helped me in my career from a technical or a functional point of view, but actually helped me to build my emotional intelligence. And that was really important. It was an important skill to build because I knew I wanted to be a manager. So, you know, there's, there's so many different things you can do, but again, I'm going to say it, put in the work. No one's going to do it for you. You need to put in the work. You need to put in the effort. And Toyin was talking about it. Have a can do attitude. You know, if there's an opportunity, put up your hand, I'll do it. I'll do it. Even if you don't get paid for it, you know, if there's, there's an opportunity to grow your skill, don't say, oh, okay, you're going to pay me extra because I'm doing extra now. No, put up your hand, say, I will do that because I'm going to learn a new skill. I had to do that a lot. I had to do lateral movements in my career. I even had to take a step back um, for less money, but I knew it was the right choice in terms of where I wanted to be. So to summarize, have a clear personal vision and make your decisions and your choices based on that. Secondly, network, do the work. Um, and thirdly, um, oh, there was something, oh, I can't remember what the third thing, oh, put in the effort, do the work. Thank you so much, Maritza, for, for, for that answer. I'm just taking one more question. And uh, yes, uh, like I said earlier, please, if possible, we would like to get where we could ask, where our people here could ask you questions directly. But I'll just, I'll just have this question. This would be to Toyin. Uh, someone says here that I studied applied physics and I'm directing this question to you because you did talk about tech and pain. And this person feels like a hey, perfect candidate. Let me put it that way. The person says, says I studied applied physics, electronics option. I made a full switch of career into tech last year in November. It's five months now, and I must say that it's been pretty challenging. I have been frustrated along the line. So far, I've learned HTML, I've learned CSS, I've learned JavaScript, and basics of React. My question is, is this compulsory to take these courses and have certifications for the languages that I've learned? That's the person's question to you, uh, Toyin. Um, so again, there is really no one way to these things, to be honest. There is really no, you know, after you take the course, then things just, you know, open up and all. But um, over the years, with my experience, what I've learned is that you also um, build projects. So for example, you've learned HTML, you've learned CSS. How I've seen people get attention from even top companies is they, they do that outlet of what they have learned. So you can say, for example, I'm going to rebuild Spotify websites from scratch using HTML and CSS. And then you tag them on Twitter, like Spotify, see what I did with your with, with your page. And I even added one or two things. Or you, you rebuild some. So that is how you build your portfolio. It's really in tech, to be honest. Yeah, there are certain places where your certificate is needed, but they want to see what you can do. They, they want to see what you can do. They want to see what you've done. So even if you're not launching them, maybe on a website or something, you, you come up with, you know, your own idea. You, you look at existing websites that maybe they look very difficult to be. You, you start from scratch, like basic steps. I, I'm not saying, no, you just go for Spotify. You can start from a very simple overlay of, of a website and you, you redesign it. You, you put out your work out there and you also network. It's very important that you network. People make use of LinkedIn. You see people, they come on LinkedIn and say, oh, I recreated, I recreated this from scratch. I recreated that from scratch. And from there, you, you, know, you start opening up your world. You start networking with people. You find communities that are, are you know, we have, if you go to meetup.com, if you don't know that meetup.com and you type in your location, you will see like communities that are maybe doing monthly meetups. So that's where you start meeting people. So you need to put yourself out there, put your work out there, not just yourself, but your work as well. And also network with people that are in the industry. Someone will, the fact is that you need, um, from what I've seen in the tech industry, you also need that connection. You need someone that will refer you. Someone that can say, I can vouch for this person. They can do the job because you have shown yourself you know as someone who, who who can do the work so it's not just about i learn i learn i learn you also need to outlet you need to network 
book as well. And like I said, these are just small ways. Like there are many channels to this thing and we can't really start listing one after the other. They can do attitude. The, the fact that you are not backing down and you always want to get your hands on things that improve your career, things that give you happiness. Like Marissa said, that is very, very important to, you know, growing successfully in this field. Thank you so much, Oluwa Toy. Thank you for another. Thank you, Maritza. Uh, thank you, Toy, once again. I mean, we've had a very insightful uh, session today. Even I learned a lot, being the fact that I'm a, I'm a woman in tech. I've still learned so much from you both today. I mean, I saw someone a comment or uh, uh, within the Q Q and A uh, section, but I couldn't quite take the comment around. You know, someone just had Marita mentioned data storytelling. The person has gone online to Google, and the person's like, "This is super exciting. This is something that you know I never knew about. It looks like this is something I want to do. How can I get to know more about this? You know." And then there's super also very interesting uh, feedback coming in around. You know focusing around what Tony had mentioned for like the tech and pain where people are saying, I'm struggling with this, I'm doing this, I'm getting frustrated. I don't feel like I'm getting a headway. What am I supposed to do? What direction should I turn into? And you know, you get, you both just sharing from, I feel like we had a very, very vulnerable session today where both of you literally just poured out from your heart, how you started your journey and just inspiring the women here to become what they can become. I mean, believe it, go for it in Marisa's words. And in Tony's words, I will leave us with these two words again. With, in Marisa's words, it's believe and go for it. In Tony's words, is your skills before your gender. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Marisa. Thank you, uh, Oluwa Toyin. And over to you, Joy. Okay. Thanks to all the panelists. So next, we'll be having Jamie Matt, Muritala, Jaminat is a graduate of transport management from Ladoki Akintola University of Technology, Nigeria. She's a strategic front-end developer and UI UX designer. Her journey into tech started in 2019 when she went through the Nigeria Women Texas program, the first in Nigeria. And she has become a software engineer and a good scrum master who understands the nitty-gritty of effective project management and um, she currently works at Carisoft Solutions Limited as a UI slash UX designer. Hello, Jeminat. Hi, good evening. Good evening. I think you're in the evening already. Good evening. Good evening. We're glad to have you here. <laughs> yeah, same here. So um, in a moment, I need you to tell us about yourself and your learning experience. How did you start? Oh, a great question. <laughs> Okay, um, like, let me read, um, okay. My name is Jamie Altamitala, and I work as the UIUX with Carisoft Solutions. Uh, my journey started 2019 with um, Nigerian Women Textile. I actually went to a um, Nigerian Women Textile program at Nigeria that day, and they were having a career day. So on getting there, it was a two days program. So after the event, the last day, I, I met a friend, Esther, and we were sitting close to each other. So she was talking about, I saw her just with some girls. They were talking about um, websites. So I was like, oh, so I was like, what are you girls into? So she explained that they're actually there for an interview for a, pro, um, for a code program that is coming up next week. So I was like, can I join? She said they registered online. So I approached um, one of, there's one woman there, she was on a job. So I approached her and like, okay, I heard this, this. Can I join? She said, no, that they registered online. I said, no, do you register? I said, no. Okay, she just said I should have a seat that I might get some luck. So, okay, so I sat down. So during that period, they were ready to do the interview. So I joined them. So we were asked to, they asked, oh, if you register online, sit here. If you do not register, sit here. If you do not know anything about the um, tech, the program before, stay somewhere. So I, I, shall, I took a position. So at the end, I was interviewed and so many questions were being asked. And I was just so eager to 
learn, I was just curious that day. I really wanted to know what the tech, yeah, I've always been a tech person. I know how to use a laptop. I'm a graphic designer. So I'm always like, okay, but I've always been hearing about website, internet, kind of. I was like, at that period, I was, someone already introduced me to Andela, Andela with Google, ALC with Google, that they teach you um, how to do HTML, CSS, kind of something. Okay, let me see how I can combine these two things together. At that point, I never had the mindset of going into the, changing my career into the tech space. I was just there like, let me just learn. Let me just, let me just see what they do. Let me just, let me just have something to do. So after the interview, I was selected. I got a mail, I was selected and they're starting on Monday and I was working. Getting to the office, I don't know how to tell my boss that ah, I'm going for a two weeks intensive program. It's just Friday, program is starting on Monday. So I was scared and, and I'm kind of pressing, I go for what I want. Once I made my decision about something, I go forward to it. I was like, the, the least reply I could get is a no. So when I approached him, I told him about the program and he said, okay, since if you have, you can always give me what I want, then you have, you can go for the program. I was so happy. In fact, he, he gave me money. So, so on Monday, I started, so I met Mr. Chris and some other facilitators. So that was how I started my coding career. And Nigerian Men Texter, it was really, really challenging coming from a background whereby you don't even know how to code, you don't even know how to, you don't even know what it entails. You are just there like, okay, let me see. But at a point, at, on the fifth day of the training, I then I was taking so I was taking Andela with Google and at the same time doing the Nigerian Textile Men program. The Andela with Google was online while the Nigerian Men Textile was a physical training. So I'm actually doing a community training and at the same time online training together. So anything I learn, I learn over the night before going to the training in the morning, I go back to the classroom to ask my facilitator about it then it takes its time to explain and also allow other people in the class to benefit from my question. So that was how I started and started getting interesting. And the most interesting part of it was when they asked us to do, um, that was our final project. They asked to build the site from the scratch. And I was like, really? Uh, no, where will I, where, what do I want to write? So, um, my uh, facilitator advised us to try and um, clone a site. Uh, so I started cloning a site. So I started cloning a site. So I cloned Microsoft. And it was, in fact, it was, if you look at the site then, and Microsoft, you think it was Microsoft website. And so I was really, really ready. So I, that was what gave me that, okay, yes, for my team, I can champion what we want to do. So we actually were, I think in my team, in the, we were grouped into five teams because we're 25. So we're grouped into five teams. And I think among everyone, it was only my team that actually built from the scratch. We built our website from the scratch using what we're taught, the HTML and CSS. So when I go back home that night, I started thinking about it and Ms. Diura spoke to us that day and said a lot about the tech career and, and I was like, and she made a statement. She said, whatever you put your mind to do, you can achieve it. And that was how I took that word down and I was like, I think I can do this. If I can do this within two weeks, so it's, it's like coding started getting interested. That's just it. Started getting interested, sitting on my laptop. You are doing stuff and you're seeing, you're seeing it's working like magic and you're like, oh, really? Yes, it's working. Yes. Yeah. So I got excited and that was how I started coding. So that was my experience, my learning experience during the women's exam training. Amazing stuff. Really, really, this is really amazing because I had a similar experience with you. I also, although I'm, I'm a science student, I know you studied transport management. So I had a science background, <laughs> you know? And it's funny how people are limited by their fears. The opportunities out there, 
like for you, you asked a question, you went to a group of women talking about tech, and you asked a question, you're inquisitive enough. Many women do not know that these opportunities exist, and they've just had this mindset that, oh, this is not for me. It's too technical. It's too, but what about trying? And taking that step of faith is really, really important, you know, and more women need to know that it's possible, um, you know, to, to go into tech. So one more thing, one more piece before we round up for time. Um, it is, okay, let me, let me ask, how did the NWT program influence your career path in general? And what, what are your future plans? I think you really covered how it influenced your career path. So well, someone that studied transport management, now you are a front-end developer and you're also into um, um, product design. Yeah, so what are your plans from here? What's the next steps for you? You're, you're muted. Please unmute yourself. Okay, like uh, Marita has said, she said um, there are no much women in the um, data science um, industry and same as product design as well. We have a lot of guys there and I can see Carrie is trying to do something like trying to impact women, having more women into the product design platform as well. So it's just simple as for tech. So women just started embracing tech and start seeing women trying to top the seats in the tech industry as well. So my future plan is to be one of the best product, when they call Nigeria, I should be one of the best female product designers from Nigeria. So that's actually one of my goals. That's actually one of my plans for the future. Okay, nice, nice to hear that. So before you go, one more, one more thing. What's your final word of advice for young girls out there? Many yeah. girls out there, yeah. Yeah, the, my advice is one thing. Let me just um say this, like, okay. For instance, we should always try to network. We should always try to wherever we find ourselves. We should always try to see, know the kind of people you are meeting, know the kind of people are in that garden. Don't always feel, oh, I don't want to ask any question. I don't. Yes, you might be an introvert, but your introvert shouldn't be the goalie one, the door one that you can't even ask a question. We should open ourselves to questions. We should open ourselves to. We should be open for other people to try and interact with us because by doing that, you'll be able to get knowledge, you'll be able to know what is happening around you, be able to know about so many skills or so many programs that are for free that are out there. And also, it's it's not an easy journey. I will say the truth, it's not an easy journey trying to come from a background, you are switching your career to a new career. It's not an easy journey, but you have to be disciplined. That's the first thing. You have to be very, very disciplined. You have to understand what you want. This is the kind of life I want. This is what I want for myself. So when you understand what you want for yourself, it helps you to actually be able to pin down your blueprint. It helps yeah. you to be able to pin down what, what the journey and the milestones. So you know that from, from one journey to another, you are covering up this. So it's, it's discipline because it's time challenging. Sincerely, it, and you know we're in Africa, whereby when it when a lady is at a point in time when you reach a certain age, there's a pressure on you mm. that you need to do some stuff, which is still, even at this 21st century is still happening. So you have to like you have to learn to say no. This is where I want to be. You have to learn to say this is what I want. You have to be able to make decisions for yourself. There are a lot of critical decisions you need to take, but it's it, it's a bold step. But one thing about life is when you take that steps, you you see it's you see that at the end it really really worth it at the end. So my advice is, people should be disciplined, know what you want, believe in yourself, and try to network with the people that are in line with what you want. And don't be carry don't be carried away with the activities of life. Because you see Instagram today, you see we have these tools, we have all the equipment, but are we using them? What do we spend our leisure times to do? Because basically, you will learn a lot in the tech world by self-studying. A lot. If you want to go far, you need to learn. You need to learn how to study by yourself because nobody will spoon feed you. You need to keep doing your research yourself. You need to keep learning. You need to keep learning. So, if, and if you don't have that time to keep learning, you and to be sincere, it's not for the lazy people. It's really not for the lazy people. You are the lazy kind of person. You need to go back and you really 
desire that you want to be a woman in tech, then you need to go back to your drawing board and re-strategize your lifestyle so that you'll be able to achieve. But sincerely, there are a lot of sacrifices. Make those sacrifices so that you can enjoy the fruit in the future. So that is just the Thank you very much, Jemina. We're so glad that you made it to the event today. And I believe people, most of our attendees have learned a lot from you. And really, there are no limits. Just put out yourself. Yeah. I put your put in your best work and you can do it. From Marisa's story, you've learned that. Um, from Marisa's have, story, you have something else to say? Okay. Yeah, I have something to say because, yeah. And a quick one is that um, there's this, um, like, Another thing is um, if my um, brief um, biography says from a product designer, I have the ideas of product designing then I'm a GIU person. And I just want people to understand another thing there is you need to think about the vision. You need to have a vision. You need to have a goal. You need to see the future. If we're told that in 2019, as, as of December 2019, I mean 31st of December 2019. We're told that in 2020, people will work from home. Offices will be shut down. People will not be able to do anything. We'll tell people it's a lie. As at December 2020, 31st, 2019. But see what happens in 2020. COVID and everything made people to change. So you need to see the future. So I actually saw the future. I'm seeing the future of what the tech industry might be because of artificial intelligence that is coming. One thing can, everything in life can be automated, but thinking can never be automated, which is why I actually switch into UI UX design, because product design can never be automated. You have to think through it, and they need the human mind to actually think through it. That's, Thank you very much. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. Thank you very much, Emina. I'm so happy that you made it to the event today, and we look forward to, you know, Having you as one of our mentors to talk and the rest of the panelists to talk to um, the, the beneficiaries of the Women Access Initiative. Thank you, Jemina, and have a lovely day. Okay, guys, thank you very much. And if you've stayed true up to this moment, I really want to say a big thank you to you. Kudos to you because you really know what you want and you're going for it. And this open day is not the only program of the Women Access Initiative. We also organize master classes um, boot camps, and we have a fellowship this year. Our master classes are for professionals, people that are junior developers, or people that are in their, um, women that are in their entry, that have entry level roles in tech, women that are already in tech, that want to learn about um, different or several topics on that particular sectors. Uh, welcome to attend our master classes. We would have professionals that will literally hold your hands and walk you through these topics they're interested in during our master classes. And look forward, uh, master class is coming up next month. We're going to put up the ads. If you're not pulling out our social media handles yet, this is the right time to follow us. Search for Tech for Dev on Twitter, Tech for Dev HQ on Twitter, Tech for Dev on, on Instagram, Tech for Dev HQ on Facebook. We'll drop the links to join our social media handles on the chat. So look out for the links. Please follow us for more updates. We have a goal to reach 10,000 women this year. And you have to be one of the 10,000 women this year. You just you can't just sit in the background. You have to join the pack. So we have Bootcamp. Bootcamp is starting next month and the trainings are ongoing. Our Bootcamp is a four-week long intensive training that takes you from novice to at the intermediate level is an opportunity for you to develop relevant coding skills, jumpstart careers. You don't even need a degree to, to um, register for the bootcamp, really. The bootcamp is just for one month, but you will learn enough to be able to start, start your own tech company because you have somebody, you have testimonies of people that have gone to the bootcamp and they now have tech companies. I went to the bootcamp program. Jemina went to the bootcamp um, program, and today she's both a software developer and a UI UX designer. So there's an opportunity for you when you register for the bootcamp. And if I yet to hear anything from us, I can see a comment saying that she registered for the bootcamp. We are still screening out, and we are still the applications are still ongoing, and we can't send emails out until we're done with um, receiving the application. So just be calm, be patient. You will get a feedback soon. Yeah, and you and you you definitely get into the bootcamp because we have five bootcamps this year. This is just the first bootcamp. The first bootcamp is going on. Um, is starting next month. 
Then there is a fellowship program. The fellowship program is one. We have one every year. And I know I don't know if you might have registered for the fellowship. And um, we are still processing the our, our screening process and we're running up this week. So from next week, look forward to receiving an email. And I wish you luck. I wish you enter into the fellowship. The fellowship is a year program. And um, there's going to be three months of technical training, a month of soft skills training, and six months of internship in tech in a top tech company across the five countries. And even though you're not selected for this year's fellowship, don't get worried. This program runs for the next 10 years. 10 years. So we, you have nine, month, nine more fellowships to apply for. And if you, you registered for the fellowship and you didn't get in, there's the boot camp. And the bootcamp will prepare you further into the next fellowship. So don't be wary. You register for the fellowship, don't worry. There's the bootcamp. And you didn't get into the fellowship, don't worry. There's a bootcamp. The most important thing is about starting your careers in tech. And for the bootcamp, like I mentioned earlier, you don't need to have a technical background at all. Just apply and you would get in. I assure you that you'll be selected. The first one is starting next month too. And um, by the time we'll round off with collecting the applications, you would get um, your notification. Someone is asking what the fellowship is about. The fellowship is a year-long training program, um, coding program that cuts across five learning tracks. Product design, I've seen questions of those that um, say that they don't, we don't um, go into the product design field, but I don't have knowledge. So there's a product design learning track, there's software development learning track, cyber security learning track, data science that Marisa, Marisa um, is in, there's data science learning track, there's the, um, Product design, product management, cybersecurity, software development, yes, and products management. That's the fifth learning track. And this opportunity, our boot camp, is open to women that are in Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa, Ghana, and Egypt. So if you register for the boot camp, please be patient. You don't need prior knowledge, but for the fellowship, you need a prior knowledge to get into the fellowship. And then we ha we have closed down the call for application for the fellowship this year but the applications for the boot camps are still ongoing to register for the boot camp you go to the link bit.li slash women texas boot camp wt and b are in capital letters so um check the start session you would um see the correct link to to register you click on the link and to take it to registration form that won't take so much of your time to register so please apply for the boot camp and before we round up we'll round up in no time don't worry we'll keep the time We'll be showing you a video of one of our uh, women textiles beneficiary. Her name is Fatima Ahmed. She was a chemist. She studied chemistry and she didn't know how to venture into tech. But today she has a career in tech. So just hold on for the video break. And after that, we have other announcements. So don't leave. Please wait for the other announcements. Thank you. My name is Fatima Ahmed. I'm from Ilarin Kora State. I studied chemistry from the University of Ilarin, but now I'm a woman in tech. Getting a job in Nigeria is very difficult. After my National Youth Service program, I was at home for like five to six months, writing CVs, applying for jobs, and the highest I got was callbacks, which was very frustrating. I was talking to a friend about the difficulties of getting a job in Nigeria, and he was telling me about the opportunities in tech. Coincidentally, at that time, another friend of mine was telling me about how she went to the Nigeria Men's Textiles program, where she learned how to code and build websites. Seeing what she could do, I was motivated to apply for the Nigeria Men's Textiles program. The training was for 12 weeks. I learned technical skills, um, building websites, writing codes. I also learned soft skills, communicating effectively, working in teams. It made me more effective in what I do today. Coming for the training, I just felt that, okay, I'll just learn some new skills, then have to go back home to apply for other jobs. But during the training, I started getting a lot of job opportunities. And here I am today, I have a good job, and I am glad I took the bold step to come for the Nigerian and Texas training. I currently work as a technical support engineer at Tech Experts, where I provide cloud-based solutions. 
I want to use this opportunity to encourage other young women out there who are looking for jobs to empower themselves with tech skills and take advantage of opportunities like this. With partners like Microsoft, we've been able to train over 2,475 women in coding and deep tech skills across 12 states in Nigeria. And all this training was done for free. Over the next 10 years, we will train 5 million women across Africa by 2030. And we're looking for partners who could join us on this journey. Hi everyone, so that was Fatima's video you just watched. She was uh, one of our beneficiaries for the Women Texas training. Thank you all so much for joining us today. It has been an amazing session. I have learned so much and I hope that you have too. Um, as Joy mentioned, the fellowship and the bootcamp will be starting in April. We have five bootcamps this year, so you can still register. If you didn't get in for the fellowship, you can register for the bootcamp and you are likely to get in for any of the bootcamps. We have five this year and then we would share. So if you registered for the fellowship and you're yet to get an email, expect an email from us on Monday. And then we would also share um, any other information we have via email as well or on our social media pages. So if you're not following us yet, you can follow us on social media. We are Tech for Dev on Instagram, Tech for Dev HQ on Twitter, and Tech for Dev on Facebook. So if you have any more questions or need any clarifications, you can send us a DM, then we'll respond to you. And you can also send us an email to inquiries at techfordev.com or womentextas at techfordev.com. So um, there's an ongoing poll. If you have taken the poll, you don't have to retake it again. If you're yet to take the poll, take the poll now. I'll be closing it shortly. And then um, the bootcamp, the applications for the bootcamp is ongoing, like Joy mentioned, so you can still apply for that. I would like to say thank you once again to everybody for being here, to all our speakers. It has been an insightful session. I hope you have had a wonderful time as well. Um, you can still share your feedback from the session and key takeaways using the hashtag Women Texas Open Day on Twitter. Tweet at us, we are Tech for Dev HQ on Twitter, and we would retweet all your tweets. Um, share with your colleagues and friends all you have learned today. Um, invite them for the next Open Day. There's room enough for everybody. Thank you all for joining us today once again. Thank you to all our panelists and enjoy the rest of your day. And Bye for now.